What's up everybody, I'm Private Hudson and this is Virginia. Virginia came out recently on September 22nd. This review was supposed to go out three weeks ago, but shit in life tends to happen. I've never heard of Virginia until a few days before launch. A user on the Twin Peaks subreddit posted a link to the store page and mentioned how it was heavily influenced by the works of David Lynch, especially the Twin Peaks TV show, which is my favorite show of all time. The soundtrack was also recorded in the same studio where the music for Lynch's films Lost Highway and Mulholland Drive were made. Obviously, I became very interested. However, as I began playing the game, that interest soon began to fade. Virginia was developed by a new studio called Variable State. This game was in development for two and a half years, and what they managed to create is absolutely baffling. Pre-release copies were handed out to famous YouTube channels, who all showed around the first 20 minutes of footage. Uh, Virginia is a narrative-driven game with no dialogue. Virginia is a walking simulator with barely any walking. As the game cuts to different locations, whenever you are finished performing the actions you're allowed to in the present one. And then, the game's only like two hours long, or so I read on the forums. Still, I wanted to give it a chance and experience it firsthand, so I did end up purchasing it for the discounted launch price of $9. It took me an hour and a half to complete, and I immediately had it refunded through Steam. Now, if you think this is a scumbag move to buy a game, beat it, and have it refunded, I don't give a shit. This was the second game that I've ever refunded through Steam, and Valve themselves give you the option of selecting I didn't like it when submitting a refund request. If I was a full-blown asshole, I would have just pirated the damn thing, but I didn't, because I really wanted to give it a chance, and my oh my, it, it was really disappointing. In Virginia, you play as a new FBI agent, Ann Tarver. You team up with veteran agent Maria Halperin to go to a small town in Virginia and investigate the disappearance of a young boy. However, your real task, which your partner doesn't know about, obviously, is to actually investigate her instead. So it's basically kind of like Twin Peaks with a spin, and the premise has a lot of potential, but they decided to completely fuck it up by creating this hour and a half long non-game. To make matters worse, the case of the missing boy is a red herring. It has no real relevance to the plot. About 40 minutes into the game, no one gives a flying fuck about the missing boy anymore. And the case is never solved. Brilliant. It's like they watched David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. They thought they understood it, but they didn't. The rest of the game is basically Maria discovering that you are investigating her because your character is such a fucking moron and decides to carry around her dossier for the whole fucking time. This follows with some pretentious crap about duty versus friendship and ends with a bunch of nonsensical events that are the equivalent of an acid trip. Not that I've ever experienced one. I think the devs who made Virginia pretty much had the following creative discussion take place. You know, like a fucking... Like a fucking meeting with all the fucking employees and colleagues and shit like that. So like someone like gets up, you know, like probably like the executive producer or like the person in charge of the story or some shit like that. He like, he stands up and he's like, <clears throat> you know, fixes his tie and everything. And then he's like, all right, all right, guys. Um, So Lynch used a red herring in Mulholland Drive. Let's do the same thing. Okay, we'll start off by having a pointless investigation of a missing child. The two main characters arrest and interrogate someone, but it's not the right person. Then Maria finds out that you're actually investigating her, and she gets very hurt and upset by it. Then we ignore the missing kid for the rest of the game, and the audience only then realize our true vision of Virginia. It was a battle about choosing to be loyal to the system, or to be loyal to your friends. In the middle of all that, let's sprinkle in a bunch of random nonsense, like a reappearing bison, and a fucking stupid red bird, and a fucking UFO. And then everyone in the office, they all stood up. And decided to create a barely interactive movie that can be finished in an hour. Then someone, who may have still had a working brain cell or two, chimed in that Steam refunds are around. So they decided to pad the length of the game out. They decided that despite the fact that your character is an FBI agent, you should not be able to sprint. They also decided to make the intro sequence be unskippable and three minutes long and have absolutely nothing shown aside from the credits. The devs also believe that their audience would have a short attention span, so they decided to repeat the same exact flashback sequence 
of some kid ripping off Maria's necklace and throwing it. They decided to repeat that about three times, at least three times during the game. And then, near the end of the game, they decided to make this, like, fucking five-minute sequence where you're just walking in a cave. Literally, you're just walking in a cave for five minutes and nothing is happening. They still weren't able to get past the two-hour limit, so they decided to create an absurdly slow option screen that they knew the player would access because, by default, the game is locked to 30 FPS. The developers highly recommend running the game at this setting, since a notification shows up when attempting to increase the frame rate cap, but in reality, they're trying to hide the fact that Virginia is not well optimized, as it frequently dropped for me down to 45 FPS for no reason back when I was playing this using my AMD 280X. I've since upgraded to a GTX 1070, but I've refunded the game, so I don't know how it performs. This cinematic style is a complete joke and clearly represents that the devs have no idea what they are doing and what they're talking about. There's a huge difference between a movie running at 24 frames per second in a video game limited to 30. Frame rate has a direct effect on how responsive the controls are. By making your game jarring, nauseating, and slower to respond, you're not making it more cinematic. You're making it frustrating and headache-inducing to play. Also, fuck off with the fucking letterbox. This is a fucking game, not a fucking movie. And even if it were a fucking movie, it would still fucking fail. The graphic style is jarring. They went for a look similar to Firewatch, and to be honest, in the YouTube videos that I saw before I played this game, it didn't look bad. It didn't look bad at all. The key difference is that those videos are only videos, and they're in 1080p. It's completely different when I am personally playing it on my 2560 by 1440 display. I mean, take a look at the lights here. They look like fucking sunny side eggs. The most jarring and headache-inducing thing about Virginia are the constant jump cuts without any transitions. I'm not a master video editor by any means, I just use a simple dissolve transition when changing scenes in my video reviews. It's simple, it's pretty much drag and drop and it looks nice. Uh, the devs of this game believe otherwise, and apparently so does the bullshit website Kotaku, where they state that this is some brilliant use of a film technique called the Kuleshov effect. They state that this effect is supposed to project a meaning between two shots. Um, show a bowl of soup and cut to a man's face? We're supposed to think the dude is hungry. Show a corpse and cut to the man's face? We're supposed to think that he is sad. Mm, okay. Okay, alright. That's your argument. Okay, so... <clears throat> How in the fuck does this relate to any of these cuts in Virginia? Walk down a corridor, and then the next thing you know, you're going down the stairs? What the fuck are we supposed to think? Our character likes to fucking walk? Stand still in your partner's office and cut to us sitting in a fucking car? Real fucking thought-inducing, man. That's real fucking thought-inducing. Holy fucking shit, dude. This has fucking blown my mind. You see, this is why you never go to Kotaku for any educated opinion. Pretty much the only positive thing about Virginia is the soundtrack, which is nice and orchestral. Virginia is a strange game, but it isn't any good. It is a poor imitation of David Lynch. I don't know why they compared themselves to Twin Peaks and X-Files, when this is much closer to Lynch's first film, Eraserhead, which is a fucking black and white, random, disturbing, nonsensical oddity. I'm not saying it's bad, so I... It's weird. I don't know if I like it or not. I saw it recently. Nothing fucking makes sense. So once again, you know, don't think I said it's a bad movie. It's not bad. I don't know if it's good. It's fucking weird. So, Virginia is like that, except it's not disturbing. You know, take all of that out and just keep, like, nonsensical. That's what Virginia is. It's pretentious, nonsensical, and boring. Twin Peaks was a place that was both wonderful and strange. Virginia is a game that's just pretentious and boring. It's the type of game that Polygon would give a 9 out of 10 to simply due to the fact that the main characters are both women and that they're also people of color. Oh wait, they already have. Hmm. I'm pretty much done with this review, but I'd like to end on one note. The game has received a lot of negative criticism just because the main two characters are black women. These Neanderthals believe that this is a social justice warrior game and part of some feminist conspiracy. Or whatever drivel these walking barrels of biological waste believe in. The same type of criticism was targeted towards Life is Strange, and I remember seeing a huge amount of dislikes for the trailer announcement video. 
just because it also had fucking two fucking women in it, you know? And I absolutely love that game. So listen up, you basement-dwelling neckbeards. There is not a single moment of feminist or SJW propaganda in either game. We've been playing as generic brown-haired white males since, like, fucking, um, Wolfenstein 3D, maybe even earlier. Seeing something different is always a breath of fresh air. What matters in video games are things like story, gameplay, characters, and so on and so forth. A generic white male is not part of a recipe for a successful game. It doesn't matter who the fucking protagonist is. It really doesn't. It could be a fucking animal, you know? Why didn't people get fucking upset when Shelter was released? You're playing as a fucking badger or a beaver or fucking some shit, huh? Where's the fucking macho white male space marine, man, with fucking biceps the fucking size of a fucking eight bricks or some shit? So here's a suggestion for you degenerate mutants. You can go buy the game. It's only $10. You can beat it in an hour and a half, or even less. Then you can fucking realize that there isn't any fucking feminazism in it. And then you can go get a refund. Or maybe you people actually have a point. Perhaps Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was created on purpose with a black male protagonist. And that game was the real reason that Black Lives Matter started. Hmm.